Hey, if you're interested in capturing quick movements in nature photographically, you can use high-speed flash photography techniques to do that. And we've shown you uh, some of our high-speed flash photography that we've done in the field. And today we're going to show you the studio setup, um, which is what we do most often. So um, if that's something that interests you, you can like and subscribe and uh, you'll be notified when we make more videos like this. So if somebody wanted to do this high-speed flash photography themselves, what are the like components that they would need to have to do high-speed photography? Yeah, so you need a, a, um, an SLR uh, or mirrorless camera, uh, an external shutter. Um, you need to have flashes because the whole key is you're exposing your image with uh, flash instead of with the shutter. Um, you need to have some type of triggering mechanism. Here we have a laser, but you can use sound, you can use infrared, uh, you can use LiDAR. Uh, and you need to have a way to control all of that. Um, and I'm doing that here with uh, the stop shot. So those are the key uh, components. And this looks crazy right now, I would say. It looks like there's lots of wires, lots of things that seem overwhelming. Um, and that's because it's it's partially our own setup that we built before Cognosys was around and partially Cognosys setup. This is a high speed flash setup to capture primarily insects in flight, but you can do really any kind of motion. So uh, jumping spiders, uh, jumping with a silk trail, um, different things like that, grasshoppers jumping. Um, and this is a setup in the studio that pretty much I leave um, going all the time, or I leave set up all the time so that I have easy access to it. Although I'm constantly, uh, you know, moving things or tweaking things depending upon what we're trying to photograph. So let's break down, uh, go through it and break down each individual kind of component and, and what's going on here. Um, you can put something like this together with different components. It doesn't have to be exactly what I have here. Um, but uh, let's just start. So I'm using a full frame uh, Canon uh, 6D, um, but any SLR or mirrorless camera will work. Um, I've got a hundred millimeter macro on there. You know, oftentimes when people see our images, they'll I'll get a question like, what kind of camera or lens are you using? I've got to get those so I can get the images you're talking about. Well, now that we've talked about the lens and the camera, we'll move on to the important parts. Basically, that does that's, has very little to do with any of this. Um, the key is that we're using an external shutter uh, on uh, the camera so that we can expose this completely with flash and really get rid of any, uh, or, or minimize really any ambient light. The reason we have to use an external shutter is because? Of something called shutter lag. Uh, basically, on these modern cameras, whenever you push down the um, exposure button, um, there's enough of a delay uh, that you would miss the action that you're trying to capture. So the way we counter that is by always having the camera on bulb and use an external shutter to block out any ambient light. Now Cognosys um, makes an external shutter. We use those uh, in the field primarily because they're easily operated via battery. They're compact. Um, but I, in the studio, am using a UniBlitz uh, shutter and driver. Um, the reason I like to use this in the studio is just because it's not quite as, uh, it doesn't make the, quite as big of an impact uh, in terms of physical impact as the Cognosys shutter. Um, it also allows me to use the Cognosys shutters out in the field, which are a little bit more portable. So by, you know, I had this set up before Cognosys shutters were around. So by using this, continuing to use this in the studio, I can deploy the Cognosys ones out in the field. Yeah, and we usually just have that in a action packer or in a Pelican, Pelican case. case. It's already already packed, so we can just run out the door with our That's high right. speed setup. That's right. So what we've got here is the UniBlitz shutter connected to a UniBlitz, UniBlitz uh, shutter driver. This is the VMM T1 shutter driver. Um, and basically, you can uh, 
the, the shutter, it will operate the shutter at about as fast as four milliseconds. Again, the camera uh, is on bulb. I'm just using an old Kirk Enterprises window mount that you can also use as a tabletop uh, support for a camera. I don't even know if they make this, at least this version anymore, but I had it and it works really well for this so that it's stable, but I can move things around. Um, I am using um, some homemade flashes here. Uh, these are Vivitar 283 flashes that I have pulled apart um, and basically put the flash tubes, six flash tubes, in a single head here. Uh, and then the capacitors uh, are all housed in boxes uh, beneath the table. And the benefit of this is that I have a lot of creativity with the lighting um, because I've got five of these. I typically use four at a time, and I've got, but I've got five of them. So that's 24 to 30 flashes that I can you know, fire all at once or I can pick and choose because I, uh, the, the controlling boxes below, uh, I have got a potentiometer built in so that I can control the duration of the flash, but I also have it where I can turn off and on banks two at a time. So I can fire two, four, or six flashes uh, on any one of these and that gives me quite a bit of, of um, creativity with the light. Does not mean you have to have that for a field setup we use uh, regular speed lights um, and as long as you don't have a ton of ambient light that can work just uh, just fine but I, I like these and I have these on um, just a uh, Bogan Magic Arms uh, attached to a super clamp so it's easy for me to move these around uh, as needed. I have two typically aimed towards the background and two aimed towards uh, the subject uh, the two that are in front, uh, I've got some diffusion on, um, and again, these can be moved around. I can easily, uh, you know, raise them up, get them a little bit lower. Uh, sometimes I'll put one, over, you know, kind of almost directly overhead. It just um, uh, depends upon what I'm trying to photograph. Then I have a flight uh, box here. I have a bunch of different sizes of flight box custom made uh, for different size insects from as small as one that will literally screw on to the uh, the camera itself because you need to be so close to the subject uh, to ones like this all the way up to the size of large light tents and, and even dog kennels uh, that have been uh, modified for uh, as a flight tunnel to capture this kind of thing in. Then I have, uh, I typically use lasers when we're dealing with insects in flight. So I have a single laser that's going across here. Uh, I have both the flight tunnel and the lasers mounted on a breadboard. I find that's really nice because um, if there's slight little bumps, then uh, everything is pretty secure and I don't have to refocus or reset up things. Um, and uh, it just makes everything you know, much more uh, secure that way. I'm using Thor Labs po posts uh, from Thor Labs uh, to be able to, to raise and lower uh, the, the uh, lasers. You can set up obviously more than one laser here if you wanted to, but I typically uh, am only using a single beam at a time for this kind of setup. So all of the flashes are tethered together via RCA cables and then this control box uh, simply then uh, plugs into uh, the uh, driver, the shutter driver, and the shutter driver is plugged into the stop shot. So this is really the brains of it all, this Cognosys stop shot. Uh, what happens is when a uh, insect flies across the laser, and uh, we'll, we can throw one in there in a bit, but I'll show you just with a stick. When the laser beam is broken, what happens is the shutter uh, opens, on the external shutter opens, the uh, camera uh, is on bulb, so a shot is taken as the flashes fire, the external shutter closes, and then the camera resets. And the stop shot controls all of that. Uh, it makes sure that the laser beam goes off before the shot is taken, it resets the camera, 
it's telling everything what to do. So it's really the brains uh, of the operation. The flight tunnel itself, or at least this one, is made out of acrylic with glass on the front and the back. That's the side that's important, or the sides that are important photographically. Uh, and I use borosilicate glass on the front and the back. It's somewhat resistant to scratches. It's optically uh, reasonably pure and relatively, uh, or optically reasonably clean, I guess I should say. And it is relatively available, uh, easily available at various glass shops and, and not uh, too expensive. So I find that that works well. The rest of it is acrylic. Um, I typically put a piece of white foam core on the bottom um, to help reflect light, uh, but then I wrap it with silver duct tape or some kind of silver reflective tape uh, where the insect will actually be captured in, in flight. And that is so that light that's hitting around will bounce up and, and, and uh, light up the underside uh, of the insect. The box this one can just open from the top, but that's not always uh, great if you're trying to get an insect in or out uh, and it's really flighty. So I've built in ports that both from the top and the side that allow me to introduce the insect into the box without having to raise it, uh, you know, ha actually having to open up the entire box, otherwise it can easily fly out. Uh, I mentioned the uh, two lights or two sets of flashes on the background. You can set up scenes so that the shot looks fairly natural with uh, uh, photographed backgrounds. Uh, we use plants to hold plants um, and, and vegetation in the background to make it look more realistic. We will even sometimes put plants inside the flight tunnel. But you can also shoot uh, things on white, which we often do as well. Uh, and there you just you know, use a white uh, piece of foam core or something similar and just blow it out. I just turn the flashes up full power and blow out the white. It makes it really easy in a studio situation to, uh, to get a white, uh, capture your insect on a white background. So we'll show you what, um, how this actually uh, uh, operates with a real insect in there. So one thing um, that uh, maybe isn't clear, but since you have a single laser beam uh, that you're on, you need to pre-focus on that. So I always just use a little... Uh, stick like this uh, that I can can set in here uh, where the laser beam is is on it running across it get that set up so I can see it pretty good and then uh, I just uh, will focus on uh, you have to open up the shutter the external shutter and then I oftentimes just use live view uh, to really uh, focus in on it Make sure I've got a nice sharp focus uh, on that. Um, and then uh, we've got, make sure you close your shutter back. Sometimes I forget to do that and you will realize it quickly when you uh, review your uh, photos. Um, and then I just caught a uh, carpenter bee um, that we can uh, throw in here and see if, uh, if it will act. So I'm going to turn the camera on. Uh, it will, I've got it recycling about every 30 seconds or so. That's being controlled by the stop shot. I'll just stick him in from the top up here. We'll see if he flies around. We're just using a white background to... Uh... We have, there you go, already, already getting pictures. So if you want to try this and um, you want to see if your setup works, we highly recommend wasps or bees they tend to fly around really well and um, do really well inside for you know several hours so another fun and easy way to get started with this is doing it at a black light or mercury vapor light where you're tracking insects you can just set this up without the flight box near the light things will be flying around and uh, you are likely uh, to capture lots of images uh, just doing that uh, and that's an easy way to, you know, get them a black background as well. Uh, there is a, a somewhat turnkey uh, setup that you can get from Cognizus called the Insect Rig uh, that basically is uh, a, a frame that the camera flashes, shutter driver, shutter, stop shot, all mounts to, and it's all battery powered. 
uh, so you can, can move that around without uh, being AC powered. Um, you can also buy those individual components and kind of assemble what you need or what you want to do, which is more or less what uh, I'm doing here. While this may appear somewhat complicated at first um, with the Cognosys uh, products, it actually makes it much, much easier because you've got the electronics basically already all figured out. But uh, if any of you get into this and are having problems getting things set up, feel free to reach out to us and we'll be more than happy to, to, uh, to try to provide any guidance we can with it. We've been doing this for... God. Gosh, probably 16, 17 years in some form or another at this point. Uh, so, <clears throat> Yeah, the Cognizant setup is a really great way to kind of dip your toe in and then you can modify that setup as you get more comfortable with it because they make it really easy to set it up for the first time. Um, so there's a little bit of a, a ventral view. Um, they don't always pose exactly like, uh, you know, what you might want. A little bit of pollen on their belly. That's just part of it. And you can see a number of shots where they're off to the side. Uh, here is uh, a little bit more of a lateral view. And we're looking at the back of the camera like this, and it, I don't know if you heard, but it, the bee just um, triggered. We will not capture those images that when we're looking, so... Yeah, so you want to be careful about turning the camera off if you have a subject that's still being real flighty in there that you would want to capture because uh, taking the time to peek at what you have will mean you're not going to get anything potentially that's right. uh, while same, you're doing that. The same that. phrase that works for barbecuing when you're looking, you ain't cooking. is the same <laughs> that goes for high-speed photography. There you go. So thanks for watching and if you have any questions or comments about this setup, you can just stick them below and uh, if you have any other suggestions for videos that you'd like us to do in the future, also put that below. And um, we have a list going, but we always like to hear what you guys want to see. So. And certainly interested in any improvements on the system that you might yeah, have too. Yeah, definitely. So uh, thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. Uzi. Tucker. Did it work? It's working. Can you walk around, like go over there?